Hi, everyone. Welcome to another SPS Mathematics vlog. Today's topic is going to be the concrete to abstract continuum, which many of you may have heard about before and we've been talking about for a while in our division. But I thought this would be an opportunity for us to just dig a little deeper and make sure we all have um, some common understanding. So the concrete to abstract continuum lives within our provincial curriculum. And if you go into that front part of your curriculum, you'll see a section that will actually articulate um, the, what the concrete to abstract continuum is and how it relates to your grade level. This particular picture or image I got from the curriculum for grade five, and I just pulled it out and put it here. But through the, the looking at the curriculum, you can see that there's a few important points that the ministry is asking us to attend to. One is the development of students as they move from that concrete um, understanding to a more ab abstract understanding. The important thing to know here is that the concrete to abstract continuum is really a tool for conceptualizing thinking and how human beings think and learn as they grow in understanding. We know that human beings really started kind of a concrete phase and we can see that best with our babies, that babies really need to touch things and taste things and smell things and manipulate things in order to gain an understanding of it. And as they develop and as humans develop, we can move into a more abstract way of thinking about things and making sense of the world around us. The image here that I'm going to show you actually kind of shows that continuum and it really is showing it as a linear model. But with anything in, in human development and human thinking, we know that things are not quite as clear cut as this and not quite as linear as this as this depicts. So remember that when you're thinking about the concrete to abstract continuum with your kids, it is often a very windy um, pathway, but the linear model helps us conceptualize the thinking a little bit. So if we think about that baby or think about some, some students in your classroom, they may be at a very concrete stage. They're just learning a concept and they need to have those manipulatives. And that's where math manipulatives become really, really important. So students at this phase, may need those counters. You may need to pull them out and they may need to actually physically have those objects. Um, and sometimes they are so dependent on the, the, con the context, they need it to match the context. And so by that, I mean, if we are talking about in our kindergarten classroom about, about two strawberries and, and three apples, the students actually need to go pull out strawberries and apples. They're at that, that level or that stage of concreteness and they need to be there and, and make their story or their image match what they're manipulating. As students progress in their sophistication um, of thinking along the concrete to abstract continuum, they may need, be able to represent their thinking with other manipulatives. And this is a higher level of sophistication. So if we're masking kids to add two strawberries and, and three apples, they may be just able to grab um, linking cubes like the ones shown in the picture and grab two, um, two red ones and three green ones. They may not even be dependent on color anymore as their sophistication deepens. And they're just using the manipulative to physically manipulate the concept and push them together. So you can see within your classroom, those who are really de dependent on the absolute concrete and those who have moved down their, their level of sophistication into being able to use different manipulatives to represent what the story or the topic is about. As they move into the pictorial phase, that's where they start drawing pictures to represent that thinking. And again, with that level of sophistication, you may see kids who need to draw the picture to match specifically what the topic was about. And so these are your kiddos who are making their strawberries and making sure it looks exactly like that and drawing those apples and making sure they look exactly like that. And that is kind of a beginning level of that pictorial representation. And as they gain more sophistication in the pictorial representations, they may be able to just draw something really quickly and say, well, yes, the squares can now represent apples and strawberries. And I'm okay with it not matching because what I'm trying to do is just create a visual or a pictorial that will match what the story is saying. That is a higher level of sophistication. The last kind of level that we're working our students towards is that abstract level. That is where they can just use the abstract mathematics, the number sentence and the numbers themselves to represent what the story or the situation was saying. So in this particular case, they can actually go to three plus two equals five. As we are thinking of, of students on this concrete to abstract continuum, 
our job as teachers is to figure out where are they with their current level of understanding and how do we model and push them to the next level. And oftentimes in a classroom, I would expose children and students to all three levels. I would show them a concrete model. I would show them a pictorial model. I would show them an abstract model so that they see the journey along the continuum. And even if they're not at the abstract, they can start connecting the abstract to where they currently are. So as you're working with kids and you get them and you notice that they're really stuck in that kind of concrete phase, as a teacher, that doesn't mean we, we take away the concrete and say you can't use them anymore, but we start to push them into pictorial. We start to show them pictorial models. We start to ask them if they can draw some pictorial models to make it work and make the mathematics work for them as well. So that's kind of our job as teachers to help see where they are and move them to along the continuum. As you are thinking about your students and assessing their needs, just to link it back to our provincial mathematics rubric where teachers in grade two, five and eight will be assessing students at the end of the year, you will see reference within the mathematics rubric to concepts that could be connected to that concrete to abstract continuum. That application of strategies, and can we apply strategies that are concrete, that are pictorial, and that are abstract, and where are students' strategies sit sitting along that continuum, and how can we help them move to that next step? The ability to, to work accurately, flexibly, and efficiently um, also links to that concrete to abstract continuum. Can they do concrete manipulation accurately? Can they, are they flexible? Can they use different models? Um, and is it the most efficient model that they're using? Often the concrete and even the pictorial aren't the most efficient, but there are efficiencies within the model, um, like the having to draw the actual apple, but just, or just being able to use the squares. And lastly, when it comes to expressions of understanding, do students have multiple ways of representing um, their understanding mathematically? And is it always concretely or is it always abstractly? And can they represent it pictorially as well? So thinking about where your students are at and their, their models and their representation can help you see the depth of their understanding in mathematics. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more information. If you have any questions or comments for me, please be sure to post them below. Have a great day.